Pick one Astros young player that has to be involved in a trade. Now you're getting something good in return. You're just not deleting this person from your roster. You're getting something substantial. You're getting whether it's a starting pitcher you want, whether it's a bat that you want, whether it's a club controlled guy, whatever, whatever the case may be. But you have to pick one player that is currently on this roster that is involved in a trade ahead of the deadline, which is a week from tomorrow, by the way. Would you rather one of these three guys? Hunter Brown, Jeremy Pena, Chaz McCormick. Mm. 713-780-ESPN. You have to pick one. 713-780-3776. Which of those three are you picking? To me, with the long-term possibilities, I'm trading Chaz McCormick. And I know that this year it's very, very difficult because of the year he's having. But overall, when you look at what Chaz... And this is like the Montero discussion in the offseason. And I always remind everybody, he had he had a career year last year. If you look at the, the overall, you know, everything to do with his career and it's season by season... He never had anything close to what he was a journeyman until he found his place in the bullpen after he was going to be DFA'd, and he completely balled out last year. But because of it, he got overly rewarded. It's not his fault, and anybody would accept that deal. But when you look at it, and this is a scenario that you just painted out, Payne is your shortstop for the future. Hunter Brown is one of your rotational pieces for the future. Chaz McCormick is not going to be a corner outfielder or your outfielder of the future. Now, you could say he could be your center fielder of the future for the next three to five years, and that would make some sense. But of the three, the easiest, the easier to part with would be Chaz McCormick. I'm going Jeremy Pena. Wow. I'm not going Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown, I, I think Hunter Brown has a stuff. I think Hunter Brown is going to contend for a Cy Young. Dana Brown was on the flagship the other day saying that he's the he's number one. He's the number one starter. I don't think Dana Brown has any intention to trade Hunter Brown. I, I, I love Hunter Brown's stuff. I think it plays. I think he's going to be really good. I think he's having a good rookie year, honestly. Uh, I think that our bar on him was pretty high for a rookie pitcher. Uh, and Hunter Brown is Hunter Brown's the first guy I'm taking off of this list. To me, it's a Jeremy Payne or a Chaz McCormick conversation. You bring up great points. Uh, he's an older guy. You know, he's he's kind of been somebody who it doesn't seem like they love, right? At least Dusty doesn't Dusty love him. Yeah. Click might have. Maybe Dana Brown's a big fan of Chaz McCormick. Dusty hasn't seemed to love uh, Chaz McCormick. The the. I want to win now, though. Like, I want to win. I want to go back-to-back. Back. I want to win another title. And Chaz McCormick is under club control for a while, too. Chaz McCormick, I believe, has four more years after this one. Jeremy Pena has five more years after this one. Now, Pena's younger, but you still have Chaz for nearly the same amount of time of club control. Chaz McCormick is also producing better right now, and he's doing it at a premium position. Jeremy Pena has a premium position as well. But what is the replacement if you trade Chaz McCormick? It's probably Jake Myers. Unless Whereas, you're getting someone in the trade. Sure, but I can also do that with the shortstop. Like, the fallback right now if Chaz McCormick is no longer on this team is Jake Myers. The fallback if Jeremy Pena is no longer on this team is Mauricio Dubon. That fallback is not nearly as much as, Ch as Chaz to Jake. Some people would argue that Dubon over Pena is a better option for the Houston Astros. Oh, for this year. And Ocho, the final, Ocho would. He absolutely would. And the final point is... I think Pena gets you more back in return. That's true. I think Vanya, Pena has far, far more trade value. So if I think Chaz McCormick helps me more right now, the fallback's not as great from Jake to Chaz, from Dubon to Pena. For me, it's Jeremy Pena. What were we talking about? Was it you and I that were talking about this the other last I week? I think so. This is hard because long-term, the replacement is way better in center field. Drew Gilbert is way more than Dubon I or like, what you could get in I, free agency. I like Drew Gilbert. I'm I'm worried, Joe, that you're you're prospect hugging a lot with Drew Gilbert. Like to say that I Drew Gilbert's going to be far and away better than Chaz McCormick right now today, I don't think is fair to either one of those is guys. It, but it's is it Chaz McCormick this last month, or now look big picture, kind of like the Montero thing I was saying, the the length of his career so far. What's so hard about Chaz is that now that Dusty's playing him all the time, you could like make it, it's really easy to make the argument that Pena is the guy you should trade. The problem is, is that Dusty has been so hit or miss with how much like they should play Chaz. I think it's hard to evaluate. Like This is the guy that last year when Jose Siri got healthy, they sent Chaz down. Yep. He played zero games in the minors because Brantley got hurt. But like the organization, different GM, sent Chaz down over Jose Siri. And then, but Pena, like he's got the World Series MVP, the ALCS MVP. My answer is, is Pena is who I would trade. 
But like, it's really hard not to think that if you trade Chaz McCormick today, this is his 110% peak value, and it will never, ever, ever be higher. See, and that's and what Vegas I'm thinking may not about. be lower. I think you you guys are thinking more about the rest of this season. I totally get that, right? Because the way he's playing right now and how important he's been, and he's going to seemingly going to be that extremely important going down the stretch too. But I'm thinking about like the long haul in terms of I'm expecting. I remember the people that wanted to lock up Jeremy Payne already, and I wasn't ready to do that. I, I would do that too. But but I I I firmly believe that Jeremy Payne is going to figure some stuff out, and Jeremy Payne is still going to be your shortstop for the long haul. So I I look at it and say Chaz might be Montero. He might think- have this one breakout year where he's. Really, really better than he's been offensively, but who's to say he's going to be that the rest of his career? Well, Chaz McCormick in 849 at bats is a 781 OPS. Like, I understand your point, both of your points, that Chaz McCormick right now, maybe this is the best value he'll ever have. Maybe this is the high watermark of like his career OPS, but a 781 OPS in his career and 850 at bats and plays good defense at a premium defensive position, why are we saying that Chaz McCormick isn't the center fielder for the next four or five years? Because I think if I still had to put my money on it, it's I I know it's, it, I agree. I'm, I'm prospect hugging 101 here. I still think Drew Gilbert has a better chance to be better than Chaz McCormick. Now he's playing than anything a bit. in the Astros organization has to be better than Jeremy Pena. That, that's fair. Because like, like, Drew like, Gilbert Dubon's really field slipped. And... His his and Dubon's flawed player like Dubon Dubon's a great defensive second baseman. I think he's a good defensive shortstop. Uh, Dubon has lots of flaws in his offensive game. He doesn't slug a whole lot. Yes, he hit the home run yesterday. He doesn't walk a whole lot, and he so he doesn't have great on base. Doesn't have a great slugging. Doesn't have a great OPS. I think Pena's better player than Dubon at their very very best. The Astros do have more in center field, Drew Gilbert, than they do at shortstop in the farm. Like the best shortstop think- farm. Hold on, the best shortstop that they have in the farm is probably Greg Kessinger. And, like, that doesn't give me a whole lot of hope. I think he's a fine utility player, but not as an everyday shortstop. But if you compare Jeremy Pena to Chaz McCormick offensively in their careers, not let's not be short-sided only this season. Let's not be short-sided only the playoffs. In their careers, Chaz McCormick has a 781 OPS. Jeremy Pena has a 695 OPS. Chaz McCormick's the better offensive player. I think the biggest thing that you mentioned, Jeremy, which is the biggest thing everybody should be considering is the, the trade value. I think that general managers across the league don't look at Chaz McCormick the way the Astros look at Chaz McCormick. But I think that general managers across the league look at Jeremy Pena as a guy that they would love to have as their shortstop for the long haul, and they believe that he's too good of a prospect to pass up. I think that's the biggest point. He carries a ton more value in a trade talk than Chaz McCormick does. But if Hunter Brown got you Dylan Cease for two and a half years, does that change the Hunter Brown part of this conversation? No, not really. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure that Dylan Cease over the next two and a half years is going to be better than Hunter Brown over the next two and a half years. Fair. Fair. But you're also right now questioning and, and how— I have, And I have Hunter Brown for— Five. Three more years after that. Yeah. So it's yeah. Dylan Cease for two and a half years and, and Hunter Brown for five and a half years. Like, give me the Hunter Brown. I wouldn't trade Hunter Brown straight up for Dylan Cease. See, Hunter Brown, the, the thing is, it's not only the, the length of the time you're going to have him— but the fact that you just know that there's no ceiling right now, that you're going to be able to develop this kid, and the chances are he's going to get better and better. And, yeah, he's trying to figure some stuff out right now, but the stuff is just too good not to translate to an organization sticking with him. And and, and Cease, for as much as he's accomplished in his career, how much does he have left? Can he still do that? Sure, you'd like to think with a change of scenery and a better overall team, better defense, and a, a lineup behind him that he could do it again, but you don't know. And, and, and there's not that same ceiling that there is, you know, that open-ended ceiling that there is with Hunter Brown. 